I receive all sorts of unsolicited mail related to my profession. A few years ago, I received an envelope the week before Pentecost. On the front was a simple drawing of two men in robes with red tongues of fire above their heads. And this image was accompanied by the phrase, will you let the spirit move you? Now recalling our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, this obviously was a reference to the events of Pentecost. Those two characters represented two of the apostles receiving the gift of the Spirit. There was one other noteworthy sentence printed on the envelope's front side. It read, Special Trial Introductory Offer Enclosed. <laughs> yes, it turns out that turned out that this was a mailing for some Christian magazine. That enticing catchphrase, will you let the spirit move you, was inviting me to experience a spiritual awakening of sorts and then be moved to mail in my subscription. Well, I didn't take him up on that offer. In fact, I don't even remember the magazine's name. The contents of that envelope are long gone, but I've kept it folded in one of my prayer books. It reminds me of the meaning of today's feast day. The question it asks, will you let the spirit move you, is indeed the Pentecost question for us. And as I reflect on this question, I hear three distinct components which together form the substance of our experience of this day. The first emphasis that catches my attention is the call to willingness. Will you let the Spirit move you? In our first reading, Jesus' followers gather in a house in Jerusalem. They are no longer the fearful ones, cowering and locked in her rooms, hiding from the authorities. They are willingly waiting in prayer for the fulfillment of his promise to send the Spirit to guide and sustain them. Willingness implies freedom and choice. What is significant here is the difference between willingness and obligation. This is the difference between wanting to do something and having to do something. It is the difference between desire and duty. And from a spiritual perspective, willingness is about our consent. Now we recognize personal illustrations of willingness. Next Sunday, we will celebrate Father's Day here at Church of Our Savior, and everyone is invited to bring a picture of someone who is or has been a father figure to them. And these will be placed on our altar for our services. And this action is not required of us. We want to show our appreciation to these special men in our lives. And as part of today's service, we will have the rite of baptism immediately following the sermon. And if you've participated in an Episcopal baptism, you may remember that the first action is the formal presenting of the candidate. And this is more than simply naming those who will be baptized. The candidates will publicly express their willingness their desire to receive the sacrament of God's presence. On this Pentecost Sunday, we are invited as individuals and as a faith community to look into our hearts and gauge our willingness, our consent, 
to the Spirit's presence among us. Well, if we are willing, then what? What I hear next in this Pentecost question is the divine promise of movement, change, and growth. Will you let the Spirit move you? Those first apostles did not remain in that upper room in Jerusalem. They left that familiar place and went out into the world, and they were changed. When we acknowledge our willingness before God, when we give our consent to God, we are invited to embark on a spiritual journey of faithfulness. And this may include setting aside our ideas, our expectations, and our assumptions. This is a difficult task for most of us. It's tempting to look back and long for history to repeat itself. Yet we are invited to exchange our familiarity with the past for the uncertainty of what is unfolding ahead of us. We are asked to trust that God is indeed directing our way. I'm reminded of Kathleen Norris's definition of prayer. She writes that prayer isn't only asking God for what you think you want. Prayer is asking God to change you in ways you can't begin to imagine. So on this Pentecost Sunday, we open ourselves to God's changing ways, both as individuals and as this congregation. And in this way, we embody God's holy presence in our time and place. And this brings me to the last component of our Pentecost question, that is, the naming of the source of our intention. Will you let the Spirit move you? It is the Spirit of God that moves us forward. All the stories of the early church that follow in the book of Acts take place because the Spirit is actively directing and guiding those first believers. The good news is that the gift of the Spirit is not limited to those early followers of Jesus. Our catechism defines the Holy Spirit as God at work in the world. This divine work includes God's directing and guiding us. We are supported by this holy presence in our lives. And how do we know that this is taking place within us, individually and as a community? Are there guideposts for us in our spiritual journey? Absolutely, yes. In his letter to the Galatians, St. Paul describes the fruit of the Spirit. These are love, peace, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In other words, when we are willing to be moved by the Spirit, our individual lives change, our corporate priorities readjust. Fear is replaced by tranquility, Intolerance is transformed into generosity. Gentle compassion towards others, especially those different from us, becomes our hallmark. You know, that mailing envelope with its clever question was intentionally set as a very creative marketing ploy. And as I mentioned earlier, it's become a spiritual touchstone for me. It concisely states the essence of today's celebration of Pentecost. So, like those first apostles, will we let the Spirit move us? Amen.
，现在请引荐所有预备接受圣洗礼的人。我仅引荐三位团前来领受圣洗。我仅引荐艾文潘前来领受圣洗。我仅引荐艾文拉少前来领受圣洗。David, do you desire to be baptized? <laughs> Helena, do you desire to be baptized? Even, do you desire to be baptized? Let's pause for just. And if all the kids could come in and come around here.父母跟教父教母，你们是否愿意在基督教的信仰和灵敏中培养你们所引荐的孩童？我愿意，求主帮助。你们是否决意拒绝魔鬼及所有背叛上帝的邪灵？我决意拒绝。你们是否决意拒
Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world to witness your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayers. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank Almighty God for the gift of water. Over yet the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In yet, your son Jesus Christ, Jesus, excuse me, in yet your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism, in yet we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior, to whom to you and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. David, I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Halina. I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Even I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> David. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism. And marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. 
Halina, you are baptized by the Holy Spirit in baptism. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. I bless your eyes that you may see God's image in everything. I bless your lips that you may speak nothing but the gospel of Jesus. I bless your hands that everything you give and everything you receive may be a sacrament. Together let us welcome the newly back. Household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. 